In this video, we're going to learn about parallel lines being cut by a transversal and the angles that are formed. So the first thing is this diagram you should be aware of. So it says that lines M and N are parallel, and in order to make the conclusions we're about to make, we have to be told that the lines actually are parallel. So this is only going to be true when the lines are parallel. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that. Parallel we can mark with these little arrows here, so that indicates that these two lines, M and N, are parallel to each other. So that has to be two parallel lines, otherwise we can't make the conclusions we're going to make. So then it talks about the different angles that are formed, so alternate interior, alternate exterior, hopefully those are things that you've heard of before. Um, those are the names for, for specific types of angles, but when the lines are parallel, there's special conclusions that we can make. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight um, the interior. So this right here represents the interior because we're going to be talking about alternate interior, same side interior. So the interior is between the two parallel lines and then the exterior is on the outside of the parallel lines. So here's our exterior, exterior. And I'm going to go ahead and label those as well. So this is the interior and then these are the exterior regions. And then the transversal is just basically a fancy way of saying a line that intersects two or more other lines. So this right here, that line, T, is the transversal. And when we make all these conclusions, we have to have the same transversal being used. So let's go ahead and just look at the first conclusion that we're going to make. So when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the alternate interior angles are congruent. So whenever we have parallel lines, they're being cut by this transversal, which just means another line that's intersecting two or more other lines, the alternate interior angles are congruent. So if you look at the words alternate interior, so interior tells me it's in the interior. Alternate means opposite sides of the transversal. So alternate stands for opposite sides of transversal and then interior of course is in the inside so when I look for angles in the interior opposite side of the transversal I see angle 4 and I see angle 6 as being congruent um, so I'm going to go ahead and just state that angle 4 is congruent to angle 6 I also have angle 3 and I have angle 5 are congruent because those are on opposite sides of the transversal in the interior. Oftentimes for alternate interior angles, I say look for the Z shape. Um, alternate interior angles come up a lot. And if you kind of look here, see the Z shape. So if I imagine tracing this, I have a Z shape. So those are my alternate interior angles. If you go backwards, so it's almost like an S. Um, those are going to be your alternate interior angles. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're looking at other diagrams with these. So the next type is alternate exterior angles. So alternate exterior are going to be on opposite sides of the transversal, but now they're going to be in the pink region. They're going to be in the exterior. So alternate exterior angles, I have angle 1 and angle 7 are going to be alternate exterior. They're on opposite sides of the transversal and they're both in the exterior. Notice I put two arcs and the reason why I use two arcs is because really one and three are congruent because those are vertical angles. So you still have vertical angles in this picture but vertical angles you don't have to have this diagram in order to say vertical angles are congruent because vertical angles are just the X but you still have them here but really what I'm focused on is the two parallel lines in the transversal. So I have 1 and 7 are congruent because of the alternate exterior. They're on the alternate sides of the transversal in the exterior. And then I have 2 and 8 are congruent. So again, I can put single arcs there because those are actually congruent to those vertical angles. So 2 is congruent to 8. And then if we move on to the next one, corresponding. So think about what the word corresponding means. Corresponding basically means that two things that match up, they correspond together. So when we talk about corresponding angles, we're talking about angles that match up. They're in the same position. So another way to think of this is in the same position. Angles that match up. Uh, 
Um, and really, it's going to be angles that match up if you imagine taking the top half of the diagram. So if you imagine taking this whole top part and sliding it down, see how angle 2 would match up with angle 6? It's in the same position if I were to slide it down. So 2 and 6 are corresponding angles. They're, they match up with each other. So angles that match up when you slide... the diagram. So 2 and 6. So corresponding angles are congruent. So 2 and 6 is one pair. We really have four pairs here because we have four sections of this graph or of this picture. So 3 and 7. If I take the top side down, 3 is going to overlap with 7. Um, 1 and 5, and then 4 and 8. Okay, so now I got my picture back. So 4 and 8 is the last set. So remember, you're thinking about ones that match up when you slide it down. So then the last thing here is same side interior. So when we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, we're looking at the interior. So we're looking in the green section, and we're looking at the same side. Same side are supplementary. So we have S, 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 same side sup. So it's easy to remember that these ones are not congruent. They are supplementary. Remember, supplementary means they're adding to 180. So think same side sup. So all S's. So if we look at these angles, 3 and 6 are going to add to 180 because those are same side of the transversal and they're in the interior. 4 and 5 will also add to 180 because they're in the interior on the same side of the transversal. They are not equal to each other. They add to 180. So what I can write is angle 4 plus angle 5 is equal to 180. I could also say that angle 3 plus angle 6 is equal to 180. Or I could say that they're supplementary to each other, meaning the same thing. The same thing is going to be true for same side exterior angles. Those will also be supplementary. So I'm just going to also just under here, I'm going to write exterior angles. It's also true. Um, meaning 2 and 7 are same side exterior, and 1 and 8 are same side exterior. Those are also going to be supplementary. So same side supplementary is the thing to remember. And remember, when I'm doing all of these, this is only true if I'm talking about the same transversal. So when I'm talking about alternate interior angles 4 and 6, it has to be with respect to the same transversal. So if I were to sketch in, let's say, another transversal over here, Alternate interior has to belong to the same transversal. So 4 and 6 are alternate interior. I can't say 4 and let's say this angle over here um, as alternate interior angles because they're part of different transversal. Even though they're on opposite sides of the transversals and they're in the interior, it's all with respect to the same transversal. So when we do all of these definitions, it all has to be one transversal, not an additional one. So let's make a note of that. Um, all with respect so all with respect to same transversal meaning we can only have one transversal involved and when we're using these definitions So if we look at the examples down below, it's just basically taking what we just, all these definitions and theorems that we just talked about, and now applying them to some algebra problems. So the first thing is it tells us that these lines are parallel. So it's supposed to, these are supposed to be labeled R and S. So those are parallel, and then these are R and S, so those are parallel. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to solve these problems. So for the first one, you have to ask yourself, are these angles going to be congruent or are they going to be supplementary? What kind of angles are we dealing with? So when I look at these, these two angles are actually going to be congruent because they're in the same position. If I take the top and I slide it down, those match up. 
these are actually corresponding angles. So whenever we have parallel lines, that implies that we have congruent corresponding angles. Again, writing out those reasons is going to be really helpful because it's going to get you used to explaining your reasoning using those theorems. So I know that these are alternate or um, corresponding angles because one's in the exterior, one's in the interior, they're in the same position. So I can go ahead and set those equal. And then we can just solve it. So subtract 25. So x equals 85. Same idea for the next one here. We look at these, one's in the interior, one's in the exterior. They are on opposite sides of the transversal. We don't have an angle that's opposite where one's in the interior, one's in the exterior. It's either alternate interior or alternate exterior. So that tells me I don't have a relationship between these. So what you can do is you can rewrite. So if I take 3x, I know that 3x can also go here because these are vertical angles. So my first reasoning here is that vertical angles are congruent, which allows me to move that 3x. Then when I look at these, these are both in the interior on the same side of the transversal, which means they have to be 180 degrees. They are same side interior, which means they're supplementary. So my second reasoning here is that parallel lines imply supplementary same side. So look at all those S's to remember. Supplementary same side interior angles. So that means 2x plus 3x equals 180. So again, I did that because when I first looked at the 2x and the 3x, I couldn't find a relationship between them. So I used my strategy of, okay, well, I can make the 3x here so that I could vertical angles, and then I knew that those were supplementary. You could have also done something like, here's the 2x, you could have put the 2x down here because of alternate interior angles being congruent, and then the relationship between the 2x here and the 3x, well, they have to add to 180 because they form a straight line. So there's multiple ways to attack this problem, um, but in the end, you have to use basically two theorems or two rules to be able to figure it out. So then we just combine like terms, so 5x equals 180, and then divide by 5, we get 36 for x, and that's it. So remember, you're going to look at the next problems, and you're going to figure out, well, which set of angles do I have? And if you don't have one of those, then look to see if you can move one of the pieces into um, a spot where it's congruent. So like move the 2x or the 3x like I just did in that last problem so that you have it into a congruent angle. So remember, in order to do these, you always have to have parallel lines first. You can't assume that the lines are parallel. You have to be told that the lines are parallel so that you can use all of the conclusions we just made. So go ahead and try the check your understanding problems, um, and we'll talk about those tomorrow.